Hi there. In today's session, we are going to work out on some numerical problems based uh, typically on the laws of motion chapter. Okay. Please let me know in the comment section if you have any doubts or if you find hard to follow. Okay. I will assist you in that regards. But before proceeding further, I would like to share a very important tip with you that you should not focus too much on your grades. In today's world, grades matter very little, okay? Therefore, don't let your mark sheet to define you what you are. In the case of a grade that is not uh, satisfactory, it's a good thing as it's provide you an opportunity to improve yourself, focusing on your weakness and strengthening yourself. But if you have a good grades, then it might be harmful for you if you are becoming overconfident, which ultimately turns you into a blind individual. Let me share with you this harsh truth that in today's world, grade doesn't matter at all. What actually matters is skill. That's why there are so many job openings, but so many employees are still laid off. It is important that you start to work out on your skill from very young age. I assume that most of my viewers are secondary or higher secondary students. So my suggestion for you is that since you are still a child, you should develop the habit of uh, concentrating on your studies. And by doing this, you will grow the habit of concentration. You should not say like this, oh, I don't like this, I don't get into this, I don't want to do this. Stop saying such things, okay? Stop giving such excuses, which ultimately proves harmful for you. For example, if you dislike math, but it is in your curriculum, then you should force yourself to learn at least whatever you have in your course. Since early childhood, you need to self-discipline yourself that uh, you should not uh, fail to complete your work despite your dislike some specific topic. Avoiding it does not solve the problem. It is important for you to learn how to force yourself. It is very important to cultivate this discipline as a habit. Otherwise, you will notice that uh, your disliking objects will also grow as you grow up because I don't like this will become your second personality. Another important thing um, you should always remember that success is not an achievement. It's not something that you can accomplish in a single day or a month. It's a year long journey and it can be daunting and uncomfortable if you don't have the right attitude towards it. You must pass the exam of patience. You must pass the exam of perseverance and endurance. Only then success will embrace you. Even if you fail, your self-discipline will restore you to your previous peak as well. When you are a child, building your character is quite easy, which is extremely difficult as you become adult. It's very challenging. So start from today, or I would suggest starts from right now. Put an end to your complaining about what you don't like. Instead, force yourself to learn it because you don't know what doors of opportunities are going to open for you in near future. Okay, I wish you all the best for your future endeavors and uh, let's start today's session. Given a car is traveling at uh, 40 meters per second, the driver sees an emergency ahead and 0.5 seconds later slams on the brakes. The deceleration of the car is 4 meter per second square. The term deceleration means negative acceleration. Okay. So, from the given data that we have here, we can write that the initial velocity of the car u is 40 acceleration which is minus of 4 
because deceleration is 4 and we have the time t is 0.5. These are the data without units I have written here. Now the first question is we have to find the distance traveled before the car stops. We have two cases to consider here. The first case is before the break and the second case is after the break. In both cases, the car has traveled some distance, right? So, the total distance would be before the break, let's say the car has traveled S1 distance, then the driver slams the break and after the break, let's say the car travel S2 distance. So, the total distance would be this one, right? The total covered distance. Let's say this is S. So, we can write S equals S1 plus S2. So, let's determine S1 first. Now, in this case, there is no acceleration. The car was moving with a velocity 40 meter per second. Therefore, we can write S1 equals 40 times t using the formula s equals vt, yes. Now we have u equals 40 and our t is 0.5, therefore 40 times 0.5, simplifying we obtain 20, 20 meter, okay. Next we have to calculate s2, that is the distance covered after the break. Now in this case we have acceleration or deceleration which is 4 meter per second square and we also have the velocity with 40 meter per second square. Now in order to calculate this which formula we have to use? We have three formula we know s equals ut plus half at square v equals u plus at and v square equals u square plus 2as. Now since we do not know the t in this case, therefore we cannot use this one and this one. So the left one is this one, okay. So v square equals u square plus 2as2. Now since the car stops, it is mentioned here, the car stops mean the final velocity will be 0 and we have our initial velocity u equals 40, therefore 40 square plus 2, we know our acceleration is minus 4 times s2 from here, we will get s2 equals 40 square by 2 times 4. 1, this is 8, this is 200. So simplifying we obtain our S2 equals 200. Therefore the total distance is S equals S1 plus S2, 20 plus 200 that is 220 meter. Therefore the final distance traveled by the car before the car stops this is 220 meter. So now that we have obtained our answer for A, let's now solve for B. We have to calculate the stopping distance if the driver could apply the brakes instantaneously without a reaction time. So the driver took some time when he saw the emergency, right? He took 0.5 second, right? And as we have just computed in our earlier problem that, that in this time the car cover 20 meter. Therefore, if the driver instantaneously slams the brake, then he would have traveled this much of distance less, right? Therefore, the 
stopping distance would be in this case 200 meter okay in problem c what we have to do is we have to calculate the difference in our answers to a and b so this is simple in our a we have 220 meter and in our b we have 200 therefore it is 20 meter now what is d assume now that the car was traveling at 30 meter per second instead and without performing any calculation state whether the answer to c would now be less than equal or to larger than before explain your answer now in this case if the speed decreases that is if u decrease then what will happen the distance the car needs to stop will also decrease yes because the distance is directly dependent on the speed the reason behind this is the deceleration is still constant while the speed is decreasing in this case only the speed is decreasing but the deceleration is same nothing has been mentioned about the deceleration since the deceleration is remaining constant while the speed is decrease this means that the deceleration will take less time to stop the car yes therefore when the distance in a and b that is in this two case this one and this one if the distance is decreasing this means the difference between the distance covered in case of a and b will also decrease therefore we can say that in this case the difference would be less than right a particle moves in a straight line with an acceleration that varies with time as shown in the diagram initially the velocity of the object is 2 meter per second therefore we have our initial velocity is 2 meter per second now we have to find the maximum velocity reached in the first 6 second of this motion so observe that from 0 second to 2 second the acceleration was 0 right then we have the acceleration is 3 and afterwards from 4 second to 6 second we have acceleration is 6 so we have to determine the maximum velocity when the particle reached here since this is a graph of acceleration and t and we know that uh, dv dt is a right this implies dv equals a dt now if we integrate both side dv this equals a dt now we will compute from t equals 0 to t equals 6 t equals 0 to t equals 6 now we know that initially our velocity was u and let's say the final velocity is vf now the right hand side we have to divide into three parts from t equals 0 to t equals 2 from t equals 2 to t equals 4 and then from t equals 4 to t equals 6 simplifying the left hand side we have vf minus u this equals now from t equals 0 to t equals 2 the acceleration was 0 right therefore the first term will be 0 
from t equal 0 to t equals 2 the acceleration is 3 therefore it is 3 dt from 2 to 4 and then from t equals 4 to 6 the acceleration was 6 dt if we simplify this we obtain 0 plus 3 4 minus 2 applying fundamental theorem of calculus 6 times 6 minus 4 0 plus 3 times 2 plus 6 times 2 0 plus 6 plus 12 this equals 18 therefore we obtain vf minus u equals 18 and vf u plus 18 now we know u equals 2 therefore 2 plus 18 this gives 20 meter per second therefore the maximum velocity reached in the first 6 second of this motion this is 20 meter per second okay now we have to draw a graph with respect to velocity versus time so let's take a different color let's say this is x axis this is y axis okay so what would be the graph v versus t let's say this is v along y axis and this is t along x axis and this is our origin now in order to determine this graph we need to know the velocity at each of this time period right from 0 to 2 our velocity was constant it was u so we do not have any problem about this but uh, velocity in the time period between 2 second and 4 second was not constant velocity in the time period between 4 second and 6 second was not constant right so the first case when the time was from 0 to 2 in this period our velocity was 2 constant let's write this as v1 now in this 2 we have when time period from 2 second to 4 second right and in this case v2 equals v1 plus a t now we have v1 equals 2 plus our acceleration in this pe period was 3 therefore it is 3 times 2 4 minus 2 that is 2 simplifying we obtain 2 plus 6 equals 8 and in case of time period between 4 second and 6 second we have v3 equals v2 plus a t our v2 is 8 and our acceleration at this period was 6 6 times 6 minus 4 that is 2 simplifying we obtain 12 8 20 therefore this was the velocity at each of this time period right in the time period between 0 to 2 we have the constant velocity 2 in the time period between 2 to 4 we have our velocity from 2 to 8 it was the variable velocity velocity at this uh, in this time period was not constant it increases from 2 meter per second to 8 meter per second and then from 4 second to 6 second our velocity increases from 8 meter per second to 20 meter per second right so we need y axis till 20 so let's take this as 20 let's write this as 2 
If you have a graph paper, then it would be easier. But here I am just showing you for your understanding how the graph would looks like. Okay. Since the velocity is constant between the time period t equals zero to two, therefore, at this time period, it will it will looks like this, and then from t equals two to four, it increases this eight meter per second. And then, from t equals uh, four to six, it increases till twenty meter per second. So the graphs, the velocity time graphs, will look something like this. Let me just point out the coordinates. So the coordinate of this point will be zero to this point is two two. This point is. Four eight, and this point will be six twenty. It it's it is not like looks like six, but I I hope you guys have have understood it right. So this is the approximate graph of the velocity versus time. But I would suggest that you should try this on a graph paper or with your scale. I do not have scale right now. So I just make an approximate uh, graph of this problem. Okay, given a graph which shows the variation of the position of moving object with time, and from this we have to draw a graph of velocity versus time. We know the relationship between the velocity and displacement is this, right? V equals d s d t, and in calculus, what does it mean? It means The slope of the tangent of a curve is given by this expression. It is a displacement versus time curve, right? Therefore, in this curve, velocity is the tangent of this curve. Okay. Now, if we draw a tangent at this point, let's say here we we want to draw a tangent, then it will looks like this. If we draw tangent at this point, then it will looks like this. If we draw tangent at this point, now observe that the slope of the tangent it is decreasing, right? With respect to x-axis. this slope of the tangent is decreasing it is gradually becoming zero it is positive but it is decreasing right and in some cases that is from here from let's say this is point o and uh, say this is point uh, a from o to a the decreasing was very steep it was steeply decreasing till point a so we can say from here we can conclude that uh, the graph will not be a linear it will be something like curve yes it start something somewhere from this let's say this is a velocity time graph our t axis is the x axis And v axis is the y axis. So it starts somewhere from here, and it will looks like this. It will never be zero, but it will almost touch the x axis. This uh, let me just erase this. Uh, so it will something like asymptotes. Yes, okay. so if you have any doubts in understanding this let me know i will make you understand in the comment section okay given a graph which shows the displacement versus time of an object which is moving in a straight line and four points on this graph have been selected so the first question is is the velocity between a and b is positive zero or negative now 
like earlier problems if we draw the tangent at each point because we know tangent is the velocity now observe that in this case the slope is negative right if we consider with respect to the how we find the slope the slope is the angle of a line with respect to positive x axis and in this case the slope is downwards in this direction and this is negative angle this side is negative yes so this is minus say minus theta 1 this is say minus theta 2 this is say minus theta 3 so we have negative slope here this means the velocity is negative okay therefore the velocity between a and b is negative what can you say about the velocity between b and c now in this case observe that the slope is constant yes it is zero therefore we can say the velocity between b and c is zero velocity is zero because the slope is zero okay question c is the acceleration between a and b positive zero or negative now observe that this minus theta 1 is less than minus theta 2 right the numerical value of the angle theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 in this case observe that theta 1 is greater than theta 2 in this case theta 1 is larger than theta 2 theta 2 is larger than theta 3 and since we have negative angle here therefore theta 1 greater than theta 2 greater than theta 3 this implies that the negative of this numerical value is in this order right so what does it mean that the velocity is negative from a to b but the negative velocity is decreasing right since the negative velocity is decreasing it means the velocity is increasing right starting from minus theta 1 it increase to 0 it starts from minus theta 1 then minus theta 2 minus theta 3 then it goes to 0 after a time period later okay so this means the negative velocity which is decreasing that is actual velocity is increasing it turns from negative to 0 so the velocity is increasing and when velocity increase when the acceleration is increasing right increasing velocity means acceleration is positive therefore the acceleration between a and b is positive now what about the acceleration between c and d is it positive zero and negative clearly from here we observe that the tangent the slope is increasing yes and it is positively increasing therefore velocity positive velocity is positively increasing and this means acceleration is also increasing therefore the acceleration between c and d is also positive given a marble is projected horizontally from the edge of a wall which is 1.8 meter high with an initial speed v a series of flash photographs are taken of the marble and combined as shown below the images of the marble are superimposed on a grid that shows the horizontal distance x 
and vertical distance y traveled by the marble. The time interval between each image is 0.1. We have to determine the value of the acceleration of free fall from the data given here, okay? So, we know t equals 0.1 and we have to determine a, the initial velocity v is along horizontal direction, right? That is v equals ux, therefore ui equals 0, okay? The marble was thrown along the direction of x-axis. Therefore, its component along y-axis will be 0. So, we know the initial velocity along y-axis is 0 and this height if we can determine this height how much it will be then using this all the data that we have gathered we can easily compute the value of a. Now, this is the midpoint of this two point, right? Therefore, the coordinate of this point is minus 1.25. Yes? So, we know x equals 1.25. We know our initial velocity along y axis is 0 and our t from here to here it took 0.1, from here to here 0.1, therefore 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Therefore, the time here is 0 0.5 and so we will apply to this formula. Let's say t naught half a t naught square. We know our initial velocity along y axis is 0, half a 0.5 square and x is minus of 1.25. Simplifying, we obtain 2 minus 1.25 square minus 2.5. Simplifying, we obtain minus 10 meter per second square. Therefore, the value of the acceleration is minus 10 meter per second square.